Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. How's it going out there, folks? It is the Earth Master out here on this Tuesday, September 10th, 2024. It's about 10.50 a.m. California time here. Latest activity on the globe shows a 1.1 earthquake into the Northern California area. Looking at the last 24 hours of earthquake activity here, 2.5 and above. Got a 3.4 earthquake here around the Clear Lake Volcanic Field, south here actually. Uh, earlier this morning, about uh, one minute after midnight local time here. Obviously seeing quite a bit of swarming up here across this area where there's uh, a whole bunch of hydrothermal plants here utilizing the heated energy or the energy below, the heated material, uh, to produce uh, energy and power homes out here across the portions of the Bay Area. So this earthquake striking about three miles deep here, 3.4 outside of the swarming area in a... Uh, yeah, kind of an odd location. Let's see what we got out there. I don't think there's any hydrothermal plants way down here. Not a whole lot showing up on the satellite imagery. So, uh, Aside from that, Northern California, fairly quiet as we look through down south here in Southern California. Mostly microquake activity overnight. Still seeing some movement clustering outside of Las Vegas and north here around the Tonopah, Nevada area. As far as any specific unusual activity here in Southern California today, not uh, seeing it. Not seeing too much out here for uh, any elevated activity. But as I continue to mention here, these earthquake swarms and cycles um, come and go. Today it looks like it's a little bit on the quiet side out there. A couple smaller quakes out through the Pacific Northwest. Nothing showing up here across Yellowstone uh, today. This is all from yesterday. A couple smaller ones. Uh, let's go check out Yellowstone uh, National Park seismograph stations here and see what we have. A whole lot of nothingness going on there. Really not seeing any uh, uh, major earthquake activity, any minor earthquake activity for that matter. So things are awfully quiet across Yellowstone National Park. Uh, Texas oil fields still getting hit outside of Albuquerque. Got a little 2.5 near the Paradise Hills area. This is a little fault system that runs here around the Albuquerque area. Uh, that earthquake coming in about 8 o'clock this morning here. So nothing big, just a couple smaller earthquakes out this in this area of the uh, country. Looking at the last 24 hours here, the largest magnitude so far today. A lot of this here is from yesterday. So we got to go way down here on the list to today's earthquake. Largest so far after midnight. Going to be a 4.6 out here across the Indonesia Islands area. Just outside the Banda Sea region where the uh, plate boundary uh, takes place here. There's a, also a little subduction zone that extends here across the eastern area uh, on the uh, oceanic trench here. Aside from that, goodness, let's see what we got down around New Zealand where we did see, uh, what we seen a little bit of uh, elevated activity there yesterday and it looks like overnight as well some more threes stirring up out here across North Island. Nothing major going on. Uh, looks like that four pointer just off the North Island coast. Uh, USGS picking up on that as well. 4.8 northern edge here of the Hikurangi subduction zone just outside of Gisborne region. Fairly shallow earthquake. Uh, I do want to run over to the GeoNet servers here real quick and see what else is going on across New Zealand. 2.2 a couple uh, 34 minutes ago. There's that 4.7 earthquake that they mentioned. Uh, USGS reporting this as a 4.8. And the location here, at least according to the GeoNet servers, uh, is uh, a little off from what the USGS is reporting. I don't like this. Kind of an odd map here. Uh, this one shows more on land compared to the USGS map here that shows it just off onto the uh, northern edge here of the Hikurangi subduction zone. Either way, a little bit of activity stirring up out there today and yesterday. Some deeper movement quakes there into the Tonga Trench once again. Japan area, fairly quiet. Not seen, uh, not seen a whole bunch of activity yet. 3.4 up into the Alaska region and uh, Middle America Trench, South America area. All these regions seen. A typical day of earthquake activity there on the globe. Not so much on the USGS map because these are all mostly uh, threes and twos out there along those subduction zones. 
A uh, little scattered activity out here across the Puerto Rico Trench. A lot of this here from... Yeah, there's a lot from yesterday. It looks like after 1 o'clock or so local time, we've seen a four-pointer. And uh, a couple other earthquakes out here north of the British Virgin Islands area around the Puerto Rico Trench. All right, what do we got coming in here to California right now? 2.2 in the last few minutes or so around Ridgecrest. We'll watch for this. Again, when we see elevated activity out here, it normally comes in cycles, works its way around various areas here of the Pacific Plate. Looking at, uh, you know, the newest activity right now, it's a toss-up between uh, the Indonesia Islands area and uh, down here across the Tonga Trench where we're seeing some deeper activity so we could be talking about maybe you know working its way up here across california because south america middle america trench all these areas showing a little bit of elevated activity here this morning 4.0 down off the coast of baja california this right here could uh, potentially increase further activity up north along the plate boundary so we'll watch uh that today big island of hawaii out there not a whole lot of movement around the kilauea volcano getting uh a handful of earthquakes here uh, at the northern edge here uh, around the Hilo Bay area as well. Uh, 2.3 coming in. Fairly shallow earthquake there, but nothing major going on there across the Kilauea Volcano uh, for now. A quick glance at the deformation chart here. Let's see what we got for today's graph. Shows a fairly decent decline here from yesterday. Notice that uh, inflation chart here going down. But uh, overall, you know, we're still staying a little consistent out here in terms of the stationary trend. But still, at a highest level observed here at the summit and the Upper East Rift Zone since 2018. This is the uh, five-year chart here. If we were to go back a little bit more, you would see uh, the, uh, the level that's um, been observed since that 2018 time period. All right, let's check out space weather activity, and then we'll check out uh, hurricane activity. Look at that. Goodness, we got uh, it lighting up out here in terms of the aurora potential. Tonight is the night to go out and check if you're a stargazer or an aurora watcher like me. Get out there after, door, or after dark there and look to the north. Northern Tier States has a, a decent chance here of seeing some aurora activity overhead. Here's the view line in the red. We could see that dip down into maybe Oregon, Nebraska area, and uh, maybe across the Great Lakes states as well. A G2 storm is expected tonight, and it looks like on um, potentially Thursday night as well. This is for Tuesday night, Wednesday night here. This is UTC time. And... Um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night. Looks like we may have another possibility of seeing some elevated conditions there in terms of the auroras. Still seeing a little bit of proton event uh, slamming into the ionosphere, although it's going down. This is about the third or fourth day that we've seen consistent uh, uh, activity there across the ionosphere due to uh, a lot of charged protons recently from the sun blasting off some uh, fairly powerful flares. Flare threat somewhat minimal at least as far as the earth directed view goes the only noteworthy sunspot right now that uh, i'm paying any attention to is this little sunspot group here center disc earth facing side of the sun we do have a number of active regions that are out on the eastern limb we'll get a better view here in the coming days uh, one of these i believe the one down here you can just barely see some of the magnetic arches here from that sunspot is a massive far side sunspot it will be cresting the eastern limb here fairly soon uh, here it is back over here this region is uh, responsible producing some of these recent far side explosions there massive cmes here recently so uh, once this comes into view here we'll get a little bit better perspective of how magnetically complex it may be and whether we'll be looking at any earth directed explosions here in the days and the weeks ahead all right hurricane activity yeah we do have some tropical systems we got to talk about here 
looking at the potential of seeing a uh, a decent hurricane here into the Gulf of Mexico. It's still at 65 mile per hour sustained wind, so Tropical Storm Francine is a current condition here. It is moving off to the northeast at about nine miles per hour. It is going to rapidly intensify into a hurricane, potentially uh, category two. There is hurricane warnings up here for Louisiana, portions of the Texas Gulf Coast as well. Uh, tropical storm warning, or yeah, tropical storm watch here in the yellow, tropical storm warning in the blue, the red being the most serious. There is potential here for some flash flooding as Francine brings in a whole bunch of moisture here to the area about Lake Charles eastward to uh, New Orleans region. Far as expected peak intensity here, let's run over to the tropical tidbit site and we'll check out Francine here. All models in the fairly consistent agreement of the path that this hurricane, soon to be hurricane, will take. Right there, uh, some of it right over New Orleans there. Model intensity guidance here looks like category, well, this has dropped actually quite a bit here. Category, upper category one. Last night, we were seeing uh, this peak up into uh, category two. So things have uh, dropped off there, which is good news in terms of, you know, well, either way, a category one, category two, still going to be a fairly big deal out here across the Gulf Coast. So let's put this into motion here, see what the GFS model is hinting at. Doesn't have a, a whole lot of time here to strengthen before making landfall over here across the uh, Louisiana area. But uh, there's the expected path. New Orleans there going to be uh, right in the middle of it all. And again, there's going to be a lot of rainfall heading in from that region. And uh, we'll have to see what happens after that. Let me go over here to the, um, the states here and see what we have. All that moisture is going to hit up here around Tennessee area and then get scattered out and about afterwards. Uh, Northern California, West Coast, we're looking at some cooler patterns coming in here. Cooler weather patterns coming up for the uh, month of September. Let's show you guys the thermodynamic map here. Temp anomalies. Uh, here is Tuesday right now. Hopefully today is the last hot day of the year. I'm, I'm hopeful. Hopefully we'll never have to, well, until next year that is. <laughs> when I'm done with hundreds. It's supposed to be about 95 today, so a little bit of a cool down here. Uh, and then as we head into the middle of the week here, looks like beginning... Um, tomorrow into Thursday we got some cooler weather out here notice the blue and purple indicating some below temperatures there for the west coast finally that uh, is gonna come and go there's another cold spell so to speak here for the west coast as we head into early next week as well Canada up here looks like they're baking underneath a high pressure ridge but uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to this cooler weather because uh, this could put an end to our our brutal summer Expect temperatures down below average here, even down into Southern California. Look at that. Maybe 16 degrees below normal for Los Angeles area, San Diego down there as well. Bring it on. I'm ready. I'm ready for fall. And that cold weather looks to uh, stick around for a little bit before. Yeah. Looks like the cooler weather wants to skip over here across the northern plains, bring in some ridging here across California, some warmer temperatures again i'm hopeful i'm hoping it's not going to be a massive heat dome but uh, we'll see how it goes out here in the meantime folks you have yourself a good day um for the locals out here in northern california uh, that can pick up uh, a radio station out of Chico, I'll be on the radio again tomorrow at noon and also at 5 p.m. on sunny 105.7 FM out of Chico, where, uh, well, the format is five decades of classic hits and R&B. I'm going to be doing a special show of One Hit Wonders, and that'll take place there on the sunny 105.7 FM out of Chico. Um... I don't know if Redding be able to pick up 105.7. It's a ways up there. But if you are out here around Northern California, uh, tune in tomorrow. You'll be able to hear my uh, radio show. Just figured I'd throw that out there. 
Uh, aside from that, uh, got a bunch of school stuff. Got to get caught up on as well today. Seismograph stations look uh, fairly quiet. A couple spikes there on the Grapevine Ranger Station. That's over here across Nevada. See a little bit of earthquake activity coming in here in the last hour or so. Uh, so just stay on guard. Even though it's quiet for now, we know things can change in the blink of an eye. Have a good day. We'll catch you guys back out here later on this evening, folks. Take care.